Uh, my name is Jesse White, and I'm the Illinois Secretary of State. Um, my name is Rachel Farrar, and I will be interviewing you today. Nice to meet you. Uh, what was your rank? I was a spec four, as a specialist fourth class. That's like a corporal. Where, uh, what branch of the military did you serve? I served with the 101st Airborne Division, 2nd Airborne Battle Group. Uh, it was called Rakasan out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. We were a combat ready rapid deployment unit. It was the Army's version of SAC, Strategic Air Command. Did you see combat? No, did not, but came close to. Uh, was that the Torah of Krakas? Well, no, what happened was when I was in the military, uh, we would always be on alert. And President Nixon was being spat upon and stoned in Caracas, Venezuela. And my unit was asked to go airborne. So we got in a C-130 Hercules and we flew toward Caracas. And we got up right around New Orleans. We turned around and came back because the 1st Marine Division had quailed the unrest. And then the lieutenant said that we were going to have, a, have bad news for you and have good news for you. The lieutenant, what is the good news? Good news is that we're returning to our base. The second, the, the second thing he said was, it's going to be a night jump. We had never jumped at night before. And so uh, I had a body automatic rifle, which is like a machine gun, but it's kind of long. And so uh, we jumped at night, and it was a little, uh, none of us had jumped at night before, but uh, we were looking forward to it. And as it turned out, everything turned out quite well. When you're jumping out of an airplane, there are three things that you don't ever want to do land on trees or in trees, in water, or high tension wires. And so we were mindful of that because we dropped on, on your moto drop zone at Fort Campbell. And it's a base that I had jumped, uh, or DZ, a drop zone that I had jumped on many times before. So we felt comfortable in jumping on it. My mother would call the base and she'd ask me, when are you going to jump? Uh, when is your next jump? And I said, well, my next jump is going to be tomorrow. And I realized that that was taking a toll on her because she'd stay awake at night, I found out. Uh, for my brother and my sister. Did you do something or have something special for good luck? For, well, whenever I was in the plane, and uh, I'd always ask myself, what in the hell am I doing up here? And when I'd say that to myself, I would get cool. I, if all my fears or all, my, all the things that I would be concerned about just would dissipate. But, you know, when you exit the aircraft, and you have your feet together, knees together, hands on your reserve, elbows in, chin on your chest, and you jump out of the plane with, with vigor. You count 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, then you push your risers outward to see if your canopy is fully inflated. So if you have a malfunction, you know what to do with it because they, if it's a cigarette roll, then you turn your head to the side and you pop your reserve. And if it's a May West where the lines are wrapped around or you have a blown panel where a section of the chute has come apart, then you know you feed your reserve out, a little pilot chute will come out, you feed it up and then you pull the cripple chute in. Did you ever have to activate your reserve? Twice. I had a May West where you have two lobes, like so, where it's, you're supposed to have one complete half moon. And then when you have a half of a half moon, then you can break your knees, break your leg, break your back. And so what you do is you activate your reserve, you feed it out, and you bring the cripple chute in. If you have a cigarette roll, then you turn your head to the side and you pop your reserve, and the chute will come out with a little pilot chute, and the pilot chute will bring the rest of the chute out. And once it gets upward, then you pull the, the, the cripple chute in. So I've had two situations like that, but uh, nevertheless had successful landings. How many times did you jump? About 35 times while I was at Fort Campbell. Uh, matter of fact, on 41A, they used to have a sign that said, uh, jumping today, and I always volunteered to jump. Now, there are several ways in which you jump. You have your reserve and you have your main. That's called a Hollywood jump. But then when you have your equipment down below and you have your, your, your weapon and your war supplies, then that's a full equipment jump. And you add probably another 125 pounds to your body. 
So now you have the, the weight of the reserve, you have the weight of the chute, and now you have underneath, from your waist down, you have your equipment, your tent, your food, your mess kit, all of your supplies. I'd go home to visit my family in Chicago. My brother was a pharmacist. My father uh, had a janitorial business. Prior to having the janitorial business, he worked for the Chicago Pottery making sinks, bowls, bathtubs, etc. And prior to then, he worked for the American aircraft industry putting uh, airplane parts into airplanes. And so um, I enjoyed going back to Chicago. We'd hike, uh, hitchhike, with the thumb, with the uniform on, and, and we were quite successful in getting from point A to point B. The people were respectful of the uniform, and many times they asked, what army are you, what unit are you with? I said, well, I'm with the 101st Airborne Division. And they said, well, what is that? I said, well, you know, this, this patch, the pen I have now is really like the patch on the, on, on the uniform. And they said, what do you do? I said, well, we jump out of perfect good airplanes. And so they were glad to give us a hike. What made you decide to go to jump school? I graduated from Alabama State College in Montgomery, Alabama. And in my senior year, and I was an all-conference a Hall of Fame basketball player and Hall of Fame baseball player in college. And after I'd graduated from college, I tried out for the Chicago Cubs at Wrigley Field. And I was scheduled, and this was June of 1956. In March of 1957, I was scheduled to go to spring training with the Cubs. Four days before going to spring training, I was drafted into the Army. So instead of going to spring training, I ended up going to basic training at Fort Lindenwood, Missouri. And while I was there, I had to go back to my college to uh, get my diploma. So they had planned for me to uh, catch a bus from Waynesville, Missouri, to St. Louis, and from St. Louis, I was to catch the LNN uh, railroad train to Montgomery, Alabama. On my way back, I was scheduled to take a hop from Maxwell Air Force Base to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, they were gonna fly me into Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. And from there I was to, you know, be transported back to my base. When we left Montgomery out of Maxwell Air Force Base, it was a sunny day. But we got 100 miles north to Birmingham, Alabama, then a tremendous storm had erupted. The gentlemen who were flying the aircraft were reservists. They had to spend so many hours flying around in order to maintain their flight status. And as we pro progressed toward Nashville, Tennessee, uh, they pulled the plane, the door off, they gave me a chute, and I asked the chief about 25 times, how you get out of this airplane? Because this is the first time I'd ever flown an airplane. And so, he gave me 25 different reasons and ways in which I should exit the aircraft. I asked him, have you ever jumped before? He said, no. I said, well, are you going to jump? He says, no, I'm not going to I'm going to ride it in. And it was that serious. So the captain said, put the door back on. We're going to move, we're going to fly toward Memphis and we're going to, going to start climbing. And as he would climb and I'd look out the window of the plane and I saw the sun shining. Uh, I just I put close my heart and I said, we're good to go. So he went around the storm and he landed at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and the lieutenant uh, came over to the plane. He said, Private White, your plane is ready for Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. I said, Lieutenant, where's the bus station? <laughs> so he directed me to the bus station. I was a little late getting back and I explained to my commanding officer what had happened. And so a few days later, I'm walking on the base and I see these gentlemen with these beautifully decorated caps and uniforms that were tailor-made, spit shine boots, blouse, pants. And I said, that's the army I want to, want to soldier in. So I asked the officer, I said, uh, Lieutenant, and the sergeant was with him as well, they were recruiting officers. Uh, what unit are you with? He says, the 101st Airborne Division. I said, uh, you guys, you jump on airplanes, right? He says, well, yes. I says, how does a guy like me become a part of this unit? He said, what do you have to offer? I said, well, 
I'm a college grad. He says, we have a lot of college grads. That doesn't mean anything to us. Do you have anything else you want to offer? I said, well, I'm a professional baseball player. He says, you got to be kidding me. No, you're not. I said, yes, I am. He says, prove to me that you're a professional baseball player. I said, just for a moment, I'll be right back. So I ran about three blocks to my barracks, went in my duffel bag, got my contract out from the Cubs. And I showed him the contract. He, could, he, he jumped 10 feet in the air. I'm looking at the guy. He was ecstatic because in the Army, you have baseball teams and basketball teams. You have boxing competition. And so he said, Lieutenant Friend would love to have you on the baseball team, but you have to go through jump school first. And so uh, after I completed basic training, I went to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, went through jump school, ran five miles a day, probably 45 minutes of physical training, PT every day for two weeks. And then I earned my wings. We have to jump five times in jump school to, in order to earn your wings. And um, it was a great, great experience. I enjoyed jumping. I enjoyed uh, my tour of duty in the military. I would advise and would like to recommend to everyone within the sound of my voice to become a part of the military. I'm red, white, and blue. I love this country. I love my experiences in the military. I served not once, not twice, but three times. I was a guardsman, a reservist, and a paratrooper. Well, the order goes like this. I was a paratrooper, a reservist, and a member of the Illinois National Guard. And so I had a wonderful experience in, in, in those uh, three tours of duty. Do you recall the day your service ended? Yes, it was, um, I think, the 19th of March. And from the 19th of March, uh, I came home, put my uniform in the closet, got my baseball glove, and got a, caught a plane from, matter of fact, it was United Airlines, from O'Hare Field to Phoenix, Arizona. And when I arrived in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, the Cub organization met me at the airport, transported me into Mesa, Arizona, and that was the beginning of my career in baseball.